Are we good? Yeah. We are live. Greetings everyone from Riga and um, if you remember a couple of months ago I went with this guy, the famous Andre on my YouTube channel anyways, mushroom picking and today he's brought over the fruits of my suffering. If you've watched the video it was an absolute <laughs> disaster. He took me into the forest for six hours. It was a really? nightmare. Yes, yeah. but as a result, we now have some pickled mushrooms. But he said to me, "You know what? I want to sell. I want to eat the mushrooms with you on New Year." I'm like, "Fair enough." He said, "But on the old New Year." And I said, "Not a bad idea. I've done that a few times, but I think some of you might want to know what this old New Year is all about. So why did you pick today to have these mushrooms? Rodney, pass me the mushrooms, mate. Will you?" What that? This is it. Homemade pickle mushrooms. You can open it. Can I? <sighs> Smells like the forest. <laughs> Any mosquitoes in there? <laughs> <laughs> mosquitoes, <laughs> peaks. <laughs> Let me try this. Can you pass me a plate? Jeez. Okay, yeah, I want you to try first. Then but I'm not having any mushrooms without a shot of vodka, so we need a shot glass right now. Um, because we're celebrating New Year. Out of the four of us here, there's only one person who actually, it's their tradition to, to celebrate this new year, but my mates here have agreed that we never need a, um, an excuse for a good party and a good yeah. time. So let's, uh, let's go with uh, this one. I think it's open already. Yeah, good. We had a few drinks last night, so we're ready. <laughs> And by the way, this is my mate Rodney, my mate, my neighbor and subscriber. And this is Chris, subscriber from England, who is currently here for a few days. And yesterday we recorded my first podcast with you, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be coming out very soon. So, um, yeah, I guess you're in for a show as well, yeah? Yeah. We're all over. Uh, now, I'm... You know, when I host people, the most important thing for me is that people feel comfortable. And Chris has already told me that he's not very good with, with uh, certain types of food. So, yeah, we're going to go easy. You'll have one? Have You'll have a shot. There you go. My sister will be disgusted. She's like, you never do shots. Yeah, well, here's the assistant. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. Who's having mushroom with me? Who, me. You're going to have mushroom I'm definitely have a mushroom. No, no mushroom. Okay. So let's get let's get Andre a nice bit of mushroom there. Yeah, that's for you, mate. Thank that's you. your mushrooms. And then we're all gonna have these uh, homemade. Do you remember this one particular? Oh yeah, I remember that one. I, I remember finding it. Yeah. You, you, see, bit you see the tiny one? Yeah. Here you Just go, mate. You see the tiny one? This is yeah. the whole mushroom. This so it's an entire mushroom. Yeah, an entire mushroom. Now you know why. Look, this is a whole mushroom, guys. Let me show it to them. This right here, baby, is an entire mushroom. Now you know why we were six hours in the forest. Because <laughs> he was picking everything. And every, every time he'd find a mushroom, he's like, oh, look at this. And it was the exact same mushroom we saw just a second ago. But anyways. Sweat and tears went into this. Let's see what's the uh, what's the outcome. Cheers, guys! Happy New Year! Cheers. Happy yeah. New Year! And happy New Year to you guys! All the best in this uh, 2024. And traditionally, there's a, there, there is also a tradition where today is when they say goodbye, goodbye to the old year, right? It's like that. So we'll explain it. It'd be cool. Yeah, he'll explain, explain it all later. So yeah. here's to you guys. Got it wrong. That was actually a very smooth vodka. It is. Those mushrooms are gorgeous. They are the Thank best you. pickled mushrooms I've ever had. Not pickled, fermented. Call them what you want. They're lovely. They have a nice texture. Because usually what happens... Full of sweat and tears. Mm. <laughs> I can feel the saltiness of my tears. Yeah. Ah, oh, absolutely beautiful. So, it being kind of a Russian tradition, I figured we'd put in a few foods 
um, that you would typically find in a Russian table. I tried to make silo kapachula. I got the wrong potatoes. Mm. I couldn't grate them. When I was grating them, they were turning into glue. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, forget it. So we roasted them instead, which Chris was I'm happy about it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> let, me get, let me get a plate for Chris, because you might as well dig in. Thank you. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about this new year and why we're celebrating new year on the 13th. Tell, tell us all about it. Well, um, actually today, um, is uh, 34, uh, 30, 31st of December, according uh, of December to, uh, 2013, according uh, 2023. Sorry, yes, uh, according to Julian calendar. Right. So um, the first Christian calendar was Julian. So before the one we use now, there was a Julian calendar. A Julian calendar, yes. At the end of 16th century, century, they made some changes to make it more modern. They calculated better the, 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 the specific years when you, you need to add an extra day in mm. February. So, and they recalculated and they changed. So, I mean, the Western world. Right. So, for the eastern part of uh, Christian society, which is orthodox, it was unacceptable because it, it was from misbelievers from Vatican, you know. Right. Yeah. So basically it's when they switched the calendar that they started having two new years. So basically they celebrate the real new year now. Yeah. Although not the so, real one, but the one we know today. So and yeah, the orthodox world uh, world, they keep um, uh, uh, they kept living according to Julian calendar uh, till the 20th, uh, 20th century. Okay. Uh, then in Russia, Bolsheviks came to the communists came to, uh, to to power and they made a lot of changes. It was quite easy. So we are not agree. We will shut you. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, no discussion. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 one yeah. choice. It was uh, it, it it was easy for, for them to get a much more modern calendar. Yes, and the rest of of um, orthodox uh, world they made new Julian calendar. Mm. It was few years later. A Serb astronaut, I don't, I don't remember his name, he made uh, another calendar with minor differences uh, with, uh, from from uh, Gregorian calendar. So, and that's why Greek, they have uh, the same uh, uh, Christmas as Catholics. Okay. So, they are Orthodox. But, but the calendars don't yeah, align. Yeah. Interesting. The, uh, yeah, yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, it's all good, but it's just an excuse for another party, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, I mean, it's, like, it's like, you know, everybody loves that Christmas season yeah. when it comes. You've got the holiday season, Christmas, New Year. That, that, that's why Russian, I, I mean, uh, Russian Orthodox, yes, they celebrate uh, Christmas in the 6th of January. Oh, this really? is Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's it's like twenty four uh, twenty fourth of uh, December according to, to the, the old calendar. calendar. Yeah, yeah, to the old calendar. Interesting. So and saying goodbye to the old year that's kind of like became like probably a Soviet tradition during the Soviet Union. They yeah. would still celebrate it and use it as yeah, an excuse. Well, like uh, when I was child, we were just celebrating it, and I didn't know what uh, uh, what we are celebrating. What is old New Year? Okay. Started so over good. It yeah, doesn't make yeah, sense, yeah. does it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all New Year. It sounds like a paradox. Yeah. Anyway. So I, and uh, I thought, yes, it's ju just to say goodbye to the old year. Let's say goodbye to the old Are you doing another shot, mate? You up for it? This is going downhill pretty fast, isn't it? <coughs> you said I wasn't going to have any shots, and now we're two in in the first five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world, my uh, friend. I seen you well last night when I staggered home at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so last night we recorded our first podcast, or my first podcast, and Chris was, was my guest. 
basically talking about his solo travels because I started a podcast on solo traveling and it was absolutely phenomenal but then Rodney came over and we continued with more drinks and more drinks and he was the problem really we were no, all here to leave here we were fine till you arrived mate <laughs> <laughs> and then before you know it, we decided, oh, we're going to go out clubbing, and we're looking at the time, it's like three o'clock in the morning. Is Which you can still do here. Yeah, yeah, stop, yeah. honestly, you can, but <laughs> then you, after a couple of hours, you're already looking for the we, after party. We were already two bottles in of vodka, and we thought, uh, yeah. it's probably not a good idea. How many people do we have in the room right now? 23. 23. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining us. If you've just tuned in, we're celebrating New Year on the 13th of January and there's nothing strange about this um it's an old tradition where andre here just explained to us and i know there's people coming in and out of the live stream so i like to just recap every now and again so there's an old tradition where new year according to the previous calendar the julian calendar the first christian calendar as my friend andre here just explained um today would have been the 31st of December 2023 so if, if you know because they don't coincide but today the 13th of January would have traditionally been the 31st now being in this part of the world we just use it as an excuse for another piss up right sure why not so choose one of your I know I know Chris wants the potatoes and I work <laughs> hard on these so I want some good reviews on my roast potatoes I made roast potatoes for Chris but choose your zakuska, your basically your snack. I'm gonna go with a scrap yeah, and onion. Can we have this one? We have Chris, whatever you one. like. First oh. impression of them is looking good. Are they nice and fluffy? Very soft in the middle. Crispy on the outside. I take my cooking very, very <laughs> seriously. As a matter of fact, if I could have a cooking show on YouTube, that would be just phenomenal. I would love that because I absolutely love cooking. So. Oh, um, herring. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. We've got herring as well. If you're just joining us, and if you're not, here's another Happy New Year to you guys. Wishing you all the best in your coming year. I hope you have a lot of success, happiness, health, prosperity, anything you wish for. And thank you for 2023. You may be a phenomenal year on YouTube. And I look forward to doing plenty more with you guys in 2024. So cheers, guys. Mmm. Mmm. So smooth. The potatoes are good. Are they good? Yeah. Did I put it off? Mmm. Mmm. Mm. See guys, I like to brag about my cooking. So Chris yesterday, if you listen to the podcast when it comes out, you'll see that. I would say for this part of the world, he has a very unique <laughs> palate. What I mean by that, he eats zero vegetables, none, nothing. You can see Andre's face is in shock. And he gets worse. Zero <laughs> fruits, none, nothing, never. This is a vegetable. Yeah, that's the only one he eats. I, I also and in vodka as well, it's the same thing. Isn't it? <laughs> so I only eat if it's liquidized or chips or roast potatoes. And bread. And, yeah, bread. So um, that complicates things. So we decided, well, we'll just make a bunch of roast potatoes. There's plenty more in the oven waiting yeah. for you, so just feel free. But uh, yeah, I was completely surprised. But as I said, I was bragging about my potatoes and there's nothing worse than bragging about something and then they don't come out. <laughs> so I'm happy that happened. So how, how many people in the room right now? 27. 27, welcome to you guys. We're celebrating New Year if you've just tuned in. Um, I'll go over some of the foods here, what we're doing, what we're eating, right? Because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what's on the table. So I've got a cheese platter there because for me, it's just an English tradition. New Year, Christmas, you have a cheese platter. Nobody's touched it. Nobody's looked at it. Don't blame them because we've got a lot of other things, but we're going to be here for a while. So um, what I decided to prepare, because this is the old the old New Year by Russian tradition, I thought I'd prepare a few uh, things that are traditionally eating, eaten um, during Russian festivities. Some of the dishes I tried to make didn't work out, but what we have here 
is um, a typical Latvian uh, delicacy. I would call it a delicacy, even though it's very common and very cheap. To me, it's a delicacy. It's unique tasting, and it's a sprat. It's a smoked sprat on a little. Um, what's this bread called again? Mm. Rye bread. Rye bread. bread. Rye bread. Buttered, and I, what I did just to smoothen it out, I chopped up some red onions to give it a bit of color, soaked them in lemon to take away all the acidity, and it just gives it that perfect kind of like smoothness. Next, I'm just going to put them on my plate as I go through because I'll eat them all. Here we've got the rye bread with the butter, onions, and marinated herring with a bit of dill on top. This is the best vodka companion. As the, we're speaking to the vodka today, you got to admit, there is no better companion for vodka than this. Completely agree. That is just yeah. like, yeah. what I call, when you do a shot, actually we better do one because I've got, I'm holding the herring. Actually, for, for people who have, who have no access to herrings, the olives, are a pretty good choice. They go well with the water. water. With yeah, the water. Yeah. 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 Yes. So you, you can buy it in every supermarket. Absolutely. And you've got the expert, the Vodking here, which he promised me he's going to be releasing a video very I'll soon. I'll be alright for now. He'll be alright yeah. for now. <laughs> so I do have vodka in my drink, so he's alright. He's not cheating. He's just not a mm. shock guy. So um, what we've got here, you've got. To, oh, she's doing the olives. Well, he's doing the olives. I'm going to do the herring here because for me, a shot of vodka followed by black bread, onion and herring is what I call an orgasm for the soul. It just works. When you do it together, it just, it has that- I call it catharsis. I, catharsis, exactly. So guys, here's the catharsis. I don't know how long this live stream is gonna last because we're already on our third shot and we just started. Well, I'm a little bit worried that you're gonna do a new shot every time somebody else comes in. <laughs> That's why I've got in 28, every time someone comes into the room, we're doing another shot. So here you go, guys. Hmm. Smell it, right? You have to smell it. He's mm. he's the expert. Mm. And then look at this, guys. Mm. Rodney, how do you like Very vodka good. with olives? Yeah, yeah. Like a, yeah. yeah. Oh. It's a good combination. Screw your olives. <laughs> this is the best. That of might course. be a good substitute, yeah, but yeah. this of course is of that's sure. This is the best, but this is a good choice too. Ah, oh, that was amazing. Okay. You know, because Another the truth of the matter is, when, you, when you're shooting a shot of vodka, putting ethanol into your body, <laughs> you're pretty much making yourself suffer for whatever reason, because we're completely moronic. <laughs> but then, you chase it with something like that that just makes you feel better. And it's just... And you, do have, you don't have the smell of ethanol uh, in yeah. your mouth. But, yeah. that's the first thing Chris said, because I'm sure he's drank vodka. This is my go-to vodka. Berioza by Rocha, like he said, Rocha, right? Rocha. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not Russian, I try. But, um, yeah, good. And the thing is, from my experience, you could go through a bottle of that, no hangover, it I'm goes fine. smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes up. smooth. You shoot. You shoot it. You know. You're not going to feel all that burning sensation. It's an amazing vodka, and um, and yeah, today it just goes perfectly. Any questions out there in the live stream? Mm -hmm. First question: Where is the cake? Where's the cake? Cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cake. Where's the cake? Oh, you know what? You're absolutely right. We should have done Medavik or Napoleon. Actually, we have a bit of Napoleon. We have Napoleon in the fridge, little piece. So cake is coming, guys. By the time we finish this live stream, we'll be into a traditional cake called Napoleon. That's traditional, right? It's quite traditional, yes. What's it made of? It's uh, made of custard. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing weird in there, don't worry. There's no herring in this cake. There's no nothing weird. I know what the Russians are like. <laughs> nothing weird in this cake. It's just delicious and sweet. Next question. Um, uh, how is Bratislava in February? Uh, Bratislava in February. Let me tell you about Bratislava in February. As far as I'm concerned, 
there's never a bad time for Bratislava. Slovakia is an absolutely phenomenal place. If February is the only time you can go, or the flights are cheap, um, go for it anyways. I personally don't necessarily, when I travel, look for places when things are booming and happening and everything, because I like to travel to a place and really integrate myself into the local society, which is always there. So my advice to you is whenever you have an opportunity to travel, grab it, take it and uh, go with the flow. You will never regret a trip. I, 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 even, even the trips that I've gotten kidnapped on, <laughs> uh, arrested, well, not arrested, but, you know, gotten into situations where, you know, people are wondering, why the hell am I filming? What are you doing here? What not? Um, I've never regretted a trip. I've never regretted a trip, so. And they all make good stories. They do, don't they? Yeah. They, they, they really enrich your Them life. Them adventures, they where enrich things happen that you don't expect, that's what makes your trips even better. Now, he's, he's a hardcore solo traveler, just like me. And uh, you're off to Poland next month. Yeah. Um, then he's off to Mexico. I mean, the guy goes everywhere. Um, but I'll agree with him 100%. Um, they enrich your life. They really create situations, circumstances that... So don't worry about the time of year. If you've got a ticket, just go. If people are saying, well, it's not the best time of year, go at the worst time of year. You'll have the best time. January in Riga is obviously very quiet. But look what happened. But I'm an amazing time, well, so... You're, you're celebrating old Russian New Year in January when the clubs were empty. I took yeah, you out yeah. the other night. We went out, one, one club, two clubs, three clubs, all dead. We finally find one that was pretty decent. Still had a great time though. But had you not come at the worst time of year, would you be sat with us right now experiencing my roast potatoes? No, of course Honestly. Not. <laughs> and the first day I arrived, it was minus 27 degrees. And I thought, what have I done? Right. <laughs> Guys, I, you, you know, I forget sometimes because we had a long, a long podcast yesterday and I'm assuming you guys know, this guy is wearing a shirt <laughs> and people, he walks around the streets like this. It's minus 20 degrees outside. Uh, I saw him on street to, tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Andres, I, I, I was driving by, <laughs> watching like that. <laughs> people are coming out to him and saying, are you all right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, everything's cool. We, I, we actually met in, in a club that I told him, all right, I'll meet you at this club. I was running late. Do, do, do we need to make a crowdfunding for your call? That's what you're poor, I can't afford one. No, but the, tr the truth is, the first night we met, we met in a club. So when you arrive in a club, you usually give your coat at the, at the club. <laughs> in Lafayette, you do. In England, you don't. Yeah, well, yeah, because in England, it's warm all yeah. year, isn't it? So <laughs> compared to Lafayette. <laughs> And then we're leaving the club. I'm getting my coat. I'm like, where's your coat? He says, no, I don't have a coat. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you don't have a coat? And he said, I don't have a coat. So you are hot. Fuck in my veins. Yeah. We, we walked from one club to the next, which was about a mile walk. And uh, he's walking like that. I'm wearing a down coat, keeping me warm. And he's walking around streets like that. Yesterday, he comes over to mine for the live stream. People are coming out of the, on the streets. So like, are you okay? Yeah, and then he was really worried. He said, are you okay? He thought this was wrong with me. <laughs> so, you know. What's your secret? Vodka. 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 You know not what? whiskey? No. I've got to say, that is... Gin? That's just is not man. Yeah, no, but vodka, vodka I've got to say, is the secret. I remember one of my first years in uh, celebrating Christmas time in Russia. So I'm in Russia. In, uh, in an area of Moscow, which is in the outskirts, called, um, I can't remember what it was called anyway, Nimchinovka, Nimchinovka, outside Moscow. A friend of mine's got a dacha there, and it's minus 30 degrees outside. So dacha is summer house. Yes, but we went in the winter, yeah. it's minus 30 degrees outside, okay, yeah. and he says, let's do a barbecue. I'm like, what barbecue? It's minus 30 outside, he says, no problem. <laughs> he gets a bottle of, like, it looked like a bottle of Coca-Cola <laughs> with no label, let's put it this way. First thing he does, <laughs> digs it into the snow, prepares the coals, you know, gets everything going, we're barbecuing the meat, everybody like, uh, standing around the barbecue, he says, don't worry, in two minutes you'll feel better. Everybody gets a, shoot, a shot of moonshine made by his grandmother. Oh. 
this stuff was I mean next level and it's about it, it was about 70 degrees yeah, easy easy yeah so we each have a shot of this we all stood around and by the time you've had two or three shots you're already taking your jacket off you're yeah. in a t-shirt minus 30 <laughs> degrees barbecuing so yeah the 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 vodka in your veins I'm you never sure. feed it once you've had a few drinks you're fine it's fine isn't it can i please have some vodka and coke have some vodka. Yeah. yeah absolutely mate here you go any other questions out there do Latvians like spicy food with uh, chili sauces? Do Latvians like spicy foods with chili sauces? Now, I'm not an authority on Latvia. My friend here, born in Latvia, grew up Latvian. You born in Latvia? Yeah. Okay, I will. <laughs> Just making sure because I know you're Ukrainian actually by, by root. But, um, now, we have a common friend. I'll tell you this story. We have a friend in common. I'm not going to name his name. But one day... You're talking about... Yeah, exactly. One day he comes <laughs> to me and he says... I said to him, you know, I'm very spicy because, you know, I travel the world. I, like, I have a very spicy palate. Let's put it this way. I can eat breakfast with chilies. That's, that's my thing. And one day I remember listening to him and laughing because he says to me, what do you mean? I eat spicy too. I'm like... Yeah, but Latvians don't eat spicy. He goes, yeah, but me, I put <laughs> black pepper and white pepper. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's spicy. Um, <laughs> that, that to me is not spicy. So when we're talking about chilies, cooking with chilies, I remember one time in, in my previous apartment, just to show you the kind of spice that I like, um, I bought these really nice chilies from the Indian shop. Now, the Indians know their spice, so I've gotten about five or six of these chilies, and I wanted to make a rose pepper salad with some hot chilies, and I've stuck these chilies in the oven. And I gotta admit, the air was very spicy. I mean, your eyes were watered. So I've opened the window, <laughs> and I'm noticing people coming into the building coughing. Everybody that's walking into the building is <laughs> <Really>? coughing. <laughs> and then after I opened the window, I remember, I noticed that people across the street, that, not across the street, no. across the courtyard where the cars were parked, were also coughing. So this no is way. how intense this <laughs> spice was. Um, so it's all really relative. So for me, my tolerance for spice is very high. Um, Latvians, go on. What would you say? I completely agree. So it's like, like nothing, is it? Yes. Salt and pepper is about as far as they go. Salt and pepper and dill. <laughs> dill, dill, exactly. So no, chili in Latvia is just not something that is commonly used. So yeah. I actually have a bit of experience with this because I went to an Indian restaurant the other night and I love um, spicy food hotter curries the better yeah normally in England I'd eat a fowl um, oh you go fowl right? and then and then that's like it, top then then they they next hot, level, yeah, isn't vindaloo it? next level but they don't do fowl here obviously vindaloo is the hottest to do so when I went in India and I said can I have a vindaloo as hot as you can make it Ooh. and I'm not going to lie it was alright but it wasn't it certainly wasn't hot. it wasn't giving you hiccups no no, no no I wasn't sweating or anything no. Okay. I was just it was nice it was a nice food I would definitely go back but I would certainly wouldn't say it was spicy really the same trick with Thai yeah, I don't eat tires with all the veg in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> veg, coconut. Um, but yeah, I would say that obviously, especially when foreign people like Indians, etc., come to a country, they tailor their food to that taste palette. Yeah, they adapt it. So I think in England we get a hot one because that's what a lot of British people like. Whereas in Latvia, it probably goes to show that. Yeah. Maybe they don't like the spicy because it tones everything down a little bit. Yeah. But it was still it was a beautiful curry. I struggle with eating curries here as well because. The minute I walk into the curry shop, and there are a few, and if it's a new one, I mean now they all know me, but if it's a new one, I'm like, the waiter comes, oh, what would you like? Oh, said, the first thing I want, bring me your chef. What do you mean? I said, bring me your chef. I said, listen, my friend, I know the local people expect you to make food like they like, which for me doesn't work. I want you to make food like you eat it in India. I said, if I order spicy, it's spicy Indian. I have regretted it at times, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I've regretted it. Where I'm, I did it once in Poland, 
and they served me a dish and I would also usually go vindaloo, fall. Yeah. Um, but this stuff was <laughs> beyond anything. I, I mean, literally, I, I wanted to call the fire brigade. That's, that's <laughs> how fucking crazy it was. So yeah, spicy in Latvia, nah, it's the, just... The, the only time when I was completely shut down with the vodka, when I was drinking with a Mexican guy in America, we, we used to, to work together, we had vodka before, then we went to his um, neighborhood. Please got we no tequila. <laughs> what? We got tequila? We got tequila, oh, no. yes. Oh my God. Uh, so they, they, they were celebrating, celebrating every day. So fiesta, yes. And when they uh, realized that I am Russian, so the one of them was Lenin, the other was Ivan. <laughs> they was from communist state Chiapas. So the first question I um, they, they asked was, "Have you ever been at the Red Square?" <laughs> so, so uh, we were having tequilas, a lot of tequilas, yes. And then Jose's wife brought us. Uh, Jose just asked me, uh, "Do you want to eat something?" Yes, sure. Chicken? Yes, okay. So they brought rice, his wife brought rice and chicken, but there was small pieces of white meat and a brown, you know, like red brown pate. So it was pure chili. <laughs> <laughs> oh and when God. I ate it, so my throat was burning. I can imagine. My, my chili, pate. yes. And, like and on the top of a lot of vodka and tequila, I had few beers. So <laughs> then I remember nothing. Next morning, I just find, uh, I found myself at my bed. <laughs> Thanks God. I can yes. only imagine. Uh, chili pate. I looked at my bicycle. So I had two versions. The one version was I, I was just pulling the bicycle <laughs> behind me when I was. Uh, on my way home, or the, the other uh, version was that I was throwing the bike <laughs> because it was full of scratches of damages. I don't know. I, <coughs> so it, it was two blocks away from uh, Jose's house. Wow. I don't know what was wrong. We, uh, what, what happened to my bicycle? Yes, but it was, it, it was almost completely destroyed. Well, chili pate, yeah. I don't know about, but let's and uh, uh, yeah, thanks to Mexican food, the real Mexican food, because. Everything I, I, I had here, for example, a Tex-Mex kitchen, you know, a few blocks away yeah, from here. Yeah, but that's it, stuff. For Mexicans, yeah. it was a, it, it's like baby food. Yeah, Mexicans know how to eat spicy, that's for sure. But talking about pates, what I've got here, guys, is a slice of white bread, because I don't want this, the flavors to interfere. A mm. sprat pate with a cherry tomato just to give it that sweetness you know and mm. a taste of my shell. i'll give this one a miss all the green thing mm. this is so uh, how do they make do they make it when, when the smoke spreads yeah some uh, spreads are broken so, and then they means mash them up. Yeah, yeah, mash them up. So, mm. this is my section here. This is meat, bread, potato. That's me. So, we're okay, happy as Larry. Yeah. This is your line. Yeah. Like a little runway for me. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, there's some more. Uh, so, question What's the name of the vodka? So, it's really good. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've got witnesses here because I keep claiming it. Um, I tried saying it once with Andre on my live stream and he corrected me. Berjozavaya Rosha. 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 And what that actually means is like a cluster of birch trees, right? It's like an area yeah, where there's yeah. birch trees. So Berjoza it's, it's young, is a birch tree. Uh, young forest, Rosha. Yeah. Okay, so it's a young forest. So it's when it begins to start growing. Uh, Berioza is the birch tree, the typical, when you travel in this part of the world, Eastern Europe, you'll find your typical black and white, kind of like mainly white uh, forest trees. That's the Berioza. And Berioza Rocha is 
like the new forest of the Berriosas, and it's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. The next question. Um, do you like uh, Lido restaurants? Do I like Lido restaurant? I absolutely love Lido. I think it's an amazing place to experience local Latvian foods. Um, just yesterday we were saying to Chris, I said, listen, let me take you out to a local place. I know you've, you, you know, you're setting your foods, but I do believe that if I take you to one place, I'll be able to feed you. You'll enjoy the things that I choose for you, like chicken shashlik, the potatoes and everything else. We agreed to do it, so we'll do it before he leaves. Um, but yeah, Lido is an absolute gem. Um, it's gotten expensive lately. Prices have gone up. Ridiculous. Uh, but there are other cafeterias that so serve... It's like the buffet players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've, I've, I've seen the video about it. No, I've seen the video about it. Yeah, but really good stuff. Um, but there are loads of, you know, cafes, cafeterias uh, in Riga where you can get some really good value. I'm talking about a plate. It's like a carving plate with your chicken, your potatoes, your salads, your sauces, and, and it'll cost you five, six euros. So, um, absolutely. Lido is great, but that's not the only place. There are a lot of good little companies. Help support them when you come to Riga. Try and find the little places, support the local economy. You know, you're helping out a family. When you go and eat in a place like that, you help a family feed and, and survive, so absolutely. For Chris, I advise the, the smoked chicken is quite, it's, it's very it's traditional. Mild, it's nice. anyway. Try it, if yeah. you don't like it. So when I came in, I, I actually thought it was pork. <laughs> I thought it was pork and I looked it. Um, I was trying to work out what part of the pork it's, it was. No, it's, it's, it's actually, I'm not gonna have one yet. It's a chicken leg, it's a chicken yeah. leg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be it's all right. It's hot smoked, yeah. marinated, and, and then- I'll definitely try some. Yeah. I've traveled a lot, but not to the Far East. Um, so I've never been past Turkey that way because whenever I look at going to places like Russia before, obviously the war was on, um, India, Thailand, I always gravitate the opposite way and I end up in America or mm. South America. Mainly America, especially because of the way I eat, I know what I'm getting. I know if I go to America, I'm gonna get meat and chips. If I yeah, go yeah, to yeah, Thailand, yeah. I'm gonna end up with obviously grass and flowers in my food, which is not really my thing. Um, I know, obviously, obviously you can get um, Western food over there, I know that. Um, but it's just in America, it's just more, so I tend to go to America a lot, I do a lot of driving trips in America, where I'll fly into one airport, drive around for a couple of weeks, do maybe three or 4,000 miles and then fly back out. So you've done Asia. Poland, you've done Turkey. I've done most of Europe, yeah, so yeah. Italy, yeah. Spain, um, Greece, Greece, Germany. My, actually, my daughter's named after a, a small Italian town just outside of Naples called Nola. Beautiful little village, absolutely gorgeous. Nobody speaks English. Just a really, like we were saying last night, you've got to immerse yourself in it. Yeah. And I don't speak Italian, by the way, but with nowadays with Google Translate and you can get away with it. They know a little bit, you can point and shout a bit louder if they don't know what it is. How do you say sleep in Russian, by the way? You say spit. spit. There you go. I'm yeah. teaching you Russian. Teaching Russian. <laughs> spice. Uh, spice. Spat. Spice. Past tense. Uh, on speed. On speed. He sleeps. He sleeps. Yeah, that's yeah, it. You would tell me yeah, the yeah, yeah, So one yeah. is sleep and yeah, one is slept. slept. Yeah. So yeah, most of Europe. I love Turkey. I used to live in Turkey. I lived in Spain. Um, Poland is just a totally underrated country by British tourists. It's amazing, I think. It's absolutely amazing country. It's probably cheaper than Latvia. Um, it is. To, it's to go out and things, to drink. Yeah. All the countries that didn't take the euro, that kept their currency, so, you know, Poland, Hungary, they have better value than, than the yeah. euro countries mm -hmm. now because they're really narrowing the gap. I mean, I can tell you honestly, right now, shopping in Latvia, if I go to a supermarket or I go to Tesco's or Sainsbury's in England, not much difference. No, there's no difference. It's more expensive, expensive than in Germany, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. crazy, isn't it? I went to Lidl the other day, <coughs> and I know Lidl prices in Germany and Belgium, yeah. and Latvia by far is more expensive than Lidl yeah. in Germany yeah. and in Belgium. Even, even not food, but uh, uh, I bought uh, a pump from from uh, Lidl in Germany, mm. and in Latvia it was uh, five euros more. Exactly, same yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Well, guys, you you are two Brits and you are outside of Britain. 
So yeah. what keeps you away from Britain? Well, for me, um, the women. <laughs> <laughs> they are so beautiful here. They're beautiful, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are so beautiful. I think the way of life as well, I appreciate the way of life here in this part of the world. Um, I have a version, you know. Go on. Need third tabs. In, in, uh, in Britain, you have two tabs. Oh, yeah. From one cold tab, hot, cold you have hot, cold cold boiling hot, hot water, and you cannot wash your hands. Uh, sure. The other tab is extremely cold wa uh, yeah. water. We have, so we actually the rest everything. of the world, they invented mixed mixer yeah. uh, taps and we enjoy it a lot. I think you too. You yeah, know, I have so what I will say the, is, the, 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 uh, uh, I'd never, uh, so uh, uh, I haven't been to Britain like a few years. I was about to say this about you. Yeah. Same the, they have mixer taps. Now mixer taps are very popular. Most really? people are really? oh, But yeah. not, as mixer, not, not as mixer as you Soviet guys, because I've seen not only mixer taps, but I've seen swinging mixer taps, where you don't just mix the temperature, but your tap goes from the bath to the sink. Yes. From the bath. <laughs> there's, one, there's one tap. Your bath is here, you've got a sink there, and your tap is in the middle and it swings from, oh, I want to have a bath. It's quite <laughs> easy. Let's have yeah. it this way. Yeah. And then I want to wash my hands. Let's bring it back to the sink. So you don't just have super efficient. You don't just have mixed temperatures. temperatures. One, yeah. You've got one tap for two devices. That's so... And also it's mixer temp. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now I remember growing up in England where you'd have like cold hot and you'd be like, oh. <laughs> I would How say you in your house, you need to, 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 to put a, a cord. No, no, I'll tell you, when I was growing up, yeah, first of all, people, back in the day, you'd have the, the flannel, right? The flannel yeah. was the way you'd wash your face and you'd have soap on your flannel and it's really old fashioned and probably horrible and disgusting. Um, but I remember when I was a kid as well, you'd have those mixer taps and then you'd have like a shower hose <laughs> with a pipe and then two pipes and the rubber things oh. that actually go onto the tap. <laughs> okay, you can get it just right. <laughs> they go onto the tap and then you switch on your tap and there's water trickling from the they cold. They just made a rubber, they're not pipe, they're just like rubber pipe. They're, they're actually, yeah. they're like, they're the like taps taps yeah. that actually go <laughs> yeah. onto yeah. the taps. And then you switch on your it's water. It's a solution. It's a solution. Yeah. Shit one, but a solution. And then while you're showering, if let's say the cold one popped out, suddenly you're getting hot, <laughs> boiling water coming on you, you know. So I would say nowadays, most people who replace the taps, so if they're if they have a new kitchen or a new bathroom, oh, yeah, yeah, really pretty much go for mixer taps. Yeah, every okay, time. okay. Yeah, so but that, that is that would be a good reason to live the UK, the mixer taps, because that, that is just diabolical. So my reason for coming here was really I enjoy nightlife and especially where I live in Middlesbrough. I know, I've seen you. <laughs> It's dead in January, so I just thought to myself, I'm going to go, like, why not go in January somewhere else that might be busier, because it's a capital city, it might not be, what have I got to lose? Yeah. Worst case scenario, it's the same, best case scenario, it's better than where I am. So, exactly. And yeah. it has been better, it's, it's been absolutely amazing, beautiful city. It is, uh, Riga is absolutely phenomenal, especially this time of year, yeah. and we've had a lot of snow today. So I went to the beach today, didn't I? Yeah, he's, he went to the beach. I think the beach. It was the most white beaches you've ever seen. I've been to Mexico, Caribbean. I've never seen a beach as white as that. <laughs> the sand was just the whitest I've ever seen. Ever. It was like snowed under. Also, the sea was frozen, and I walked out about thirty meters under the ice. Did you? Which really? Was quite impressive. Yeah. It's frozen. Yeah, frozen solid. Yeah. A, a week before it wasn't. No, yeah, yeah it's not. unbelievable. So you can walk out thirty meters, and then about, at about fifty meters out, that's when it started. It was the first. So basically, thing. actually, it's it's half salt water, half sweet, half uh, yeah. half salt in in Riga Bay. Yeah, uh, that's why. That's it's like yeah, 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 yeah. Were you yeah, wearing that freezing. shirt? Uh, I actually had a jacket on. No, 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 no. Say, this guy's like in a t-shirt walking on water in Riga. You know? Obviously, you get the wind of the course. I thought, uh, I, yeah. I don't want to freeze there. It was also minus 12, so. Uh, you were on, 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 on a train. Yes. Not? Yeah. Uh, were you crossing the river? Yeah, that was yeah. frozen. Have you seen the, the, the fishermen yes. on the ice? Yeah. So I went to the zoo, uh, I think it was three days ago, I went to the zoo and at the back of the zoo was a massive lake yeah. and there were ice fishing on the lake yeah. and at first I it thought, looks... 
from a distance it looked like oh penguins are there yeah well, I, I thought it was metal cut out statues like in the water just to look pretty yeah and then one moved i was like hang on that's something not right there and when i looked it was some fishermen nice fish, yeah there. they drilled holes yeah in, they walked the out and drilled holes and yeah unbelievable they catch really um Cold interesting fish. fish yes it smells like cucumber mm. these days yeah Wow, Koryushka, you know? No, but no? definitely gonna try This that. is the size of, of spreads, a bit bigger, the small... Like sardines or...? Uh, yeah, approximately, yes. It's also relative to herrings, yes. Uh, and it smells when it's fresh, it smells like fresh cucumber. Wow. Perfect I think we should talk about... I went to the market the other day as well. And you eat some interesting fish here? The people in England would probably not expect. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen Did pike, you green, green, carp, Car yeah. all there. Lamprey. But I've seen lamprey, yeah. Lamprey. But, yeah. So you're used to um, haddock, cod. Yeah. So I, personally, I've only had it in cod and skate, which is like skate. a flat fish. Um, That's all you'll eat, right? They're the only fish I They're the ones that are sold in the fish shop. Yeah. You have a saveloy, no problems. Uh, if it's bad, I don't mind. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. so like fish and chips I'll eat, as long as they're the right fish. But it was just weird to see what we would consider coarse fish that people would oh, yeah, throw yeah, back in the water yeah. that they actually eat here. Yeah, for sure. So for that's sure, a, a variety story. of fish. How many people in the room right now? Uh, 46. Greetings guys, if you're joining us recently, we are celebrating New Year here in Riga with my friend Andre. Rodney and Chris, um, the way this all happened right here, guys, is some mushrooms, pickled mushrooms. Now, if you guys have been following the channel, you will know that a couple of months ago I released a video where this guy, Andre, took me into the forest for six hours and was able to make me live my worst nightmare. <laughs> I've never had a worse day. I, th I think if I had to rank, rank the top 10 worst days of my life, one, this one was up there. Uh, I really appreciate the intention, but the truth of the matter is, I'm not a wilderness guy, especially, you know, you guys are all crocodile dandies, crawling over the floor, you know, cutting up stuff. But me, I just, no, I'll, I'll buy my mushrooms in the shop. But, as a result of struggling and suffering for hours with mosquitoes and dirt and, and smells and, and wild boars that were making noises in the <laughs> sky, God knows what you were talking about. <laughs> um, he took the mushrooms that we collected that day and he then fermented them, right? These are yeah, fermented mushrooms. Fermented mushrooms. And I'll tell you guys, they are quite phenomenal and i'm going to go for round two on mushrooms if anybody wants to join me we did a little shot on mushrooms earlier. i advise you to have um, the milk caps like i know yeah, what the yeah, hell is a milk cap yeah. what is a milk cap yeah. the, these are milk caps. he's talking yeah. to me like he went with me once to the to the to the forest for mushrooms now he's talking to me like i'm some kind of expert you having mushrooms mate no no, no, no so that's a question i have obviously mushrooms you've got to be very careful which mushrooms you pick we saw a mushroom. He says to me, "You see that mushroom?" I go, "Yeah." He says, "Kill forty people." Mm. So there's the three. Only there's yeah, only three yeah, types yeah, of mushrooms: yeah. the nice mushrooms, the mushrooms that make you see God for three days, <laughs> and the mushrooms that make you see God permanently. <laughs> so how do you know we saw which ones you get? We saw all three. How do you know you're not picking the wrong one? The experience. Experience. This guy knows his stuff. He's like, he's like a real forest man. And he's you like, trust him to know his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even double checking him, you're just like, ah, oh, I'll just eat them and see what happens. Exactly. So here's two Andres. Fan oh, wait, where's your, where's your drink, mate? What are you having? Yeah, we have new visitors. Can I ask one question to Watkin? Yeah. Yes, Watkin. Sure. He says, um, can Watkin make the sound when he uh, finds a mushroom? <laughs> Oh, oh, you see. <laughs> oh, he's lying on the floor. Oh, oh, oh look at this one. Oh, have a look. <laughs> it was like Yeah, that. I don't know. That, that was like... Weird. Anyone who just tuned in at that second would be like, <laughs> what is this all about? <laughs> it's all about mushrooms, guys. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you've just tuned in, if you were here from the beginning... You forgot. Uh, this one here? Oh, okay. What okay. up? Thank you. Disgraceful. Hey, 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 hey. Don't, don't start I'm with cheating. your... Yeah, no, no. 
we don't do that here. Anyway, guys, if you just tuned in, you know that um, traditionally in this part of the world, when you make a toast, you don't just say cheers, whatever. It goes with food. This is like a typical thing. Um, but I've already made three toasts, so I'm going to pass on the toast to you guys from my friend Andre here and let him make his wishes to you. Um, to all of you and to Justin, I wish uh, to have more videos on Justin's channel. Yes. Enjoy your journey. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Enjoy your journey. <laughs> what a great toast. Mm. Still, the best thing ever for a shot of vodka is the herring. Mm. The chicken is really good. I will yeah. try some. I promise. Mm -hmm. You know what? You guys asked us. Why leave England for, for, for Latvia, right? Now, my friend here, Rodney, funny enough, called me up. He's from, he's from Holland. Been living here, how many years? Four years. Four years now. Here's the interesting thing. He calls me up a couple of weeks ago from Amsterdam. He was traveling to Amsterdam. He sends me a picture of a miserable, horrible cup of coffee. <laughs> Because I gotta say that the coffee in Holding Latvia. How did you know that it is miserable? And I saw it. You can see a cup of coffee if it's good or not. If you drink coffee like I do, I have three shots of espresso my first hour of the day. <laughs> I take coffee very seriously. So he sends me a picture of this coffee that must have cost him about six or seven euros. And because in Latvia, the coffee, I've gotta say, when you go to the coffee shops, the quality yeah. of the coffee is very, very good. And you know, being foreigners, we're very close. We have a very good friendship. You know, we, we have a different mindset than, than the locals or whatnot. But he said to me something very, very true. He says to me, you know what? Riga is my home now. I don't feel at home when I'm back in Holland. And I gotta say, I feel the same now when I'm, when I'm traveling to other parts of the world. When I get back to Riga, it just feels like I'm home. Mm. And it, it's a great feeling. I mean, it's yeah. a great place to call home, yeah. honestly speaking. Um, to me, Riga is a fascinating city. It's like a small city. Everything is close. You have access to everything pretty much any time. Um, it's not over crowded with tourists, which is unfortunate because it deserves the tourism. Uh, from a selfish point of view, I know that the tourism would really help the situation in Latvia. Um, and we're going to fight to bring back the tourists in Latvia. And if there are any Latvians living abroad, watching this live stream, that were born in Latvia, thinking, oh, my life's miserable wherever I went to. Come home. We need you here. We've got a hemorrhaging uh, population of 50,000 a year. Come back to your roots. It's a fantastic country. If you're going to struggle somewhere, you might as well struggle here. But I'll tell you one thing, a lot of opportunity here. If people come back, there'll be more and more opportunity. Support your country. It's a fantastic place. Come back. I swear to you, you won't regret it. So today I read the news and there was written that last year um, there were, there were uh, quite many uh, re-immigrants. People, People coming back, back but yeah, it's still, it's still negative. negative. I think that the statistic is still losing 50,000 a year, which is, which is bad. So. so, to reverse your question, why do you think my fiends are leaving? It's such a beautiful place. Economic reasons, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think what's happened here is that... If you have a simple job, it quite, um, it's quite hard yeah. to earn money for living. Yeah. Hmm? That's why so many lesbians are in Great Britain, yeah. in Ireland, in Germany. Yeah, the problem is, yeah. your buying power is not as good, so when you leave to go to somewhere like Great Britain, everything's more expensive, especially housing rent, housing cars. Housing rent, yeah. Yes, housing rent. Yes, so although you food, might is, food is less expensive. Clothes is less expensive in, in Britain. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. kids' clothes. I mean, you know, a friend of ours was saying, because you, you buy kids' clothes in England, 
There's no VAT on kids' clothes. Yeah, we get twenty one percent. Yeah, you got twenty one percent on everything. Yeah. Whereas in let's say in Spain, you've got a sliding VAT, so from four percent, zero percent on things like women's tampons and things things that are necessary. necessary. We still charge for the VAT, and that. that's disgusting. You know, uh, things that are absolutely yeah. a necessity. So, you, and let's say basic foods like four percent, then regular foods are ten percent, and then you've got twenty percent for alcohols and things that. But here it's just flat twenty one percent, and it's just almost like, almost some vegetables. So yeah, only locally yeah. grown vegetables, not all vegetables. If you bring vegetables from Greece, they're not five percent. They, they are five percent if if they are the same uh, vegetables like in, uh, or fruits as in Latvian. Apples from Greece uh, has, uh, have the same five percent. Yeah. Really, but from from the first of January, they they cancelled. No. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but, but the, the, the point is, I mean, anyway, in the UK, okay. you, things that are made for kids, yeah. there is no VAT, I think that's brilliant, but going back to my initial point, a lot of people have left Latvia, I think the population is down by 50% since it got its independence in 1991. And, so uh, it was two and a half million? And now it's 1. 1.6, 1. 1.7? Uh, I I think it's less than one and a half. I agree. I I agree. But because now you know, with the EU, you can yeah. go and live abroad. You don't need register. Yeah. You know, the, the I'm using the same currency, so you've got yeah. all your savings. You don't have to transfer them. There's a lot of advantages, obviously, for them. Yeah. Being in the EU, but the uh, prices obviously have changed. Yeah. The only, only only the UK decided it wasn't valuable, yeah. but it was much easier back then. So. And uh, we lost generation of. Uh, baby boom of uh, 1980s because uh, the, uh, these people went to the labor market um, right at the crisis of 2009 yeah. 2008 yeah, yeah. And, uh, there was a huge uh, almost all of them are left yeah there was a huge exodus back in 2008 yeah. 9 when the crisis really hit um, but the thing is, I mean, the way I look at it right now, we're probably anticipating something very similar. So what's going to happen? You're going you're to have an empty country in the end. So guys, come back. I, I mean it. Come that, back. That, that's why nightlife is so poor. It's dead right yeah, yeah. It's dead. Because people don't have as much disposable income as yeah. they used to have. There's yeah. not enough people. <coughs> just people were not there. I mean, I remember 10 years ago, you'd go out in Riga, you'd go to the old town. Uh, I you couldn't walk. An average uh, age man here in my 45. Yeah. So we have really old population. That's true. I'm 46, so I'm a bit older. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm older than everybody here, so. You're the granddad, aren't you? Exactly. Any other questions? So, next question. What do you think of Bulgaria adopting the euro next year? Um, <laughs> I can guess. What do I one. think of Bulgaria adopting the euro next year? You've just killed Bulgaria, as far as I'm concerned. If you take a look at the countries over the last 20 years since the existence of the Euro, I think it's 23 years, um, the countries that have been able to really maintain their independence, countries like Hungary, Poland... Um, Czech they're, back here, is that? Yeah, I mean, they, 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 they pretty much... All right, they're in the EU, they have, they're regulated in certain ways, but if they don't like something, they don't do it. But countries that have actually taken the Euro, um, they're all held by the balls. They have no more say in how things go so much because you know they're, they're just too vested into the economy or to the economic situation. So um, I think Bulgaria, Romania as well joining the Euro, as far as I'm concerned, is just the end of Bulgaria and Romania as I know it as a country that has um, a lot of... Um, a lot of values that I respect and appreciate, ways of life that I think are unique, traditional, and that I miss greatly. So yeah, it's for me it's extremely disappointing. There's nothing good about it. And cost value of, for money as well. Yeah, cost of living is going to go through the roof for the Bulgarians. It's going to make it tougher on them. And um, for what reason? I don't know. So. I know that uh, in, I think it's March of, or April of this year, they were actually joining Schengen through yeah. air and sea, not through road yet, but that's the first step. 
Uh, but as I said, when you still travel to Bulgaria and Romania, you still feel like you're in Bulgaria in Romania. And I used to feel that in Latvia, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I would travel here. Now, when I come to Latvia, I just feel like it's another Western country. You go to a mall, you go KFC, Burger King, McDonald's, H&M. Thank God, um, KFC. And yeah, but listen, <laughs> listen, there's enough of that back home. So I know you're I, right. I, I personally miss the, the being able to travel and experience the local traditions and they're just disappearing more and more all these things that you're looking at once upon a time you would have gone to a place had a shot of vodka and they would have been ready with zakuskas and everything this is all disappearing these traditions are just becoming part of history and everybody is gearing towards fast food junk food rubbish food crap food basically not my thing covered in chemicals exactly so now we've got uh, we've got Poland, uh, we've got bulgaria and romania and the minute you join the EU or the, the, the some, Euro? Some countries still keep their traditions. Go on. Italy. But still, you, you, go, to a, you go to a mall in Italy. You could be in a mall anywhere. Go and find me a good pasta place in a mall in Italy. You will find, an, uh, you will find a, a, a KFC. No, you will find no. A, yes, absolutely. I don't know where in Italy you're going recently, but it's it's so it's so hard to find. Maybe in a train station you can find a McDonald's or something. That's all you will find. But a block away you find good place to eat. The local one. Mm. And they still have yours. I disagree, my friend. I disagree. I think the Euro what it's doing it's narrowing the gap between the poor countries and the richer countries. It's narrowing the gap of the cost of things. But not narrowing the gap. With but the not wages. narrowing the gap in terms of income. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not natural that, let's say, shopping in Latvia is the same or more expensive than Germany, yet the salaries in Germany are about three, four times higher yeah. than they are in Latvia. It doesn't make sense. And I think we're going to see the same problem in Bulgaria and Romania when they join the Euro. I hope by some miracle they decide at the last moment, say, no, we're not doing this. But um, like I said, eventually it's inevitable. The thing is, though, back in Britain, we're obviously not in the Euro. Yeah. And we have exactly the same problems. Well, obviously, I'm cost of living, inflation, but cost of energy is horrendous. You are out of. EU, do you enjoy it to be out of EU? Oh, well, absolutely not. So I'm an engineer and I work in Europe quite a lot and obviously I can only work <coughs> three months in every six. So I can either do three months in one go and then go home for three months. Mm. And I'm not allowed, I'm not even allowed to go on holiday to Spain for three months. That's I cannot, crazy I cannot because you've already used up your time. I've already used up the time or I can do, which is what I did when I was in Germany. I can work a month in Germany, then come home for a month and yeah. work a month. And then what happens is because it's a rolling three months, your month that you were there originally is coming off as your month that you're there is adding on. So you can actually get around it a little bit. But I can't just go and work in Germany for six months, unless I get a visa, which takes, mm. costs a lot of money. Yeah. I think last time I was in Germany, um, the company was gonna sponsor us, yeah. and it was 600 pound a week for the visa application to go through, and it could take up to 12 weeks. So that company's having to pay 8,000 pound to get me yeah. a, a permanent visa for two years. They're not gonna do yeah. it. And they just say, oh no, in that case, you just do a month on a month off, which is what I did. So yeah, uh, it's not helping us with immigration. Yeah, it's not making any difference. So it's made it worse. It's probably made it worse, right? So it's made it worse. What's it done, really? It, we, there's no advantage to being out of it. As far as I can see, so far there's only disadvantages. Mm. So, but you know, as I said, these are political issues. They make decisions based upon I don't know what. Who they don't make sense. Bribe? Exactly. So. <laughs> Let's not try and understand these, these politicians. Mm. This is, we are an apolitical channel here. We just talk about good things, good times. And New Year. Exactly. New Year Drinking in the middle of January. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, there's a question which is to Mr. Chris, but I would, uh, I would say we, we all could answer. So, Mr. Chris, where is your next trip? So, my next trip is next month to Poland. I'm going to Krakow. I've been to Krakow before. I love the place, the main square is absolutely gorgeous. Krakow's phenomenal. 
So my sister wants to go to Auschwitz uh, with my nephew. So I said I'd go to Krakow with them. It's quite near, yeah. It's I've, a skipping well, I've been, I've been at Auschwitz when I, last time I was there. So I don't want to go, so it's ideal because I can go with them and be like with them for the week when we're there. But they can go to Auschwitz on their own and I can just go to the pub. And just pick yeah, the nice one. And then just meet them with. afterwards, yeah. When are you going to be there? I might join you in the pub, mate. <laughs> I haven't booked it yet, so um, I'm going with another friend. So my friend Mandy's coming. So there'll be me, Mandy, my sister, my nephew are all going because she wants to go to Auschwitz as well. So they'll all go together. I can just go and nice move it up in the square but yeah we haven't booked so i wanted to get this trip out of the way so once i get home on monday i'll start looking at um a crack out and then it'll just be whenever in the month I, i'm open so yeah that's how i like to be flexible and the best thing the best way to save money on holidays is to be flexible so let, let me know your dates because guys as i said to you before one of the best bits of uh of having this youtube channel is really meeting really nice guys just like chris here just like rodney um i've had an amazing time and for me the best bit has been meeting my subscribers so if you travel in the region just drop me a message on instagram or on telegram saying listen i'm going to be in you know uh warsaw or varna or sofia on these dates you never know odds are our, our journeys will meet so where's your next trip mister um, I'm going to be in Germany in, in uh, four weeks, also for four weeks. In February? In February, yes, uh, um, and in, in, in the end, beginning of March. So um, I'm going to be about uh, North Rhine-Westfalen, so the most crowded part of uh, Germany, which I, I really don't like. This is too crowded and people are nervous extremely nervous yeah yeah i don't enjoy I mean, from, driving from there. london i know exactly what you mean <laughs> <laughs> okay well um yeah but nice where are you off to mate probably amsterdam amsterdam, amsterdam. he's going home to amsterdam <laughs> actually we're going there together in february right in february yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to see two days. an art exhibition yeah, in amsterdam yeah. that'll be a lot of fun it's an amazing city yeah. amsterdam. one of the greatest yeah, cities in the world i love amsterdam no comment, right? No comment. <laughs> 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 Look the other side. <laughs> and uh, as for me, I've got hopefully, you know, I've had a bit of a rough couple of weeks lately with with um, recovering from some weird shit that's happened to me. But what I have planned is now, guys, I'm a YouTuber, so it's obviously going to be a bit more extreme. So on the 25th, I fly to Brussels for five days. From there, I go to Sofia for three days, then to Plovdiv for two days. Then I take the night train to Varna, stay there about eight days, go back to Brussels for two days, <laughs> back to Riga for three days. Then I fly to Warsaw to meet another subscriber, Mark, phenomenal guy. From there, we go to Gdansk, Gdansk, Vilnius, Vilnius, Kaunas, Kaunas, Riga, Riga, Tallinn, and then back to Riga. And uh, I should be pretty much traveled up by then. You know? All right, but you I, 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 need, I, need, I need a rest. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Bring me a fridge magnet, please. <laughs> <laughs> My sister wants a pen from every place you go. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll <laughs> think of hotels, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, um, this vodka for me is the best vodka. It's called Beriozovaya Rosha. Um, it's, it's so unique because everybody's tried it. And everybody goes, damn, that is so smooth. I think it's smoother than Grey Goose. Grey Goose is, is, is just, you know, ethanol compared yeah. to this. You can drink this stuff. It's smooth. It's nice. But here's the great thing. You drink a bottle of this. And not that we're advising that. No, but we have. We have. <laughs> we, we, have did we did last night. night. We did last yeah, night. We did two bottles bottle between us. Yeah. Um, but no, no hangover the next day. That's the most amazing thing is that you wake up fresh and you can you can actually function. So Andre is doing the uh, honors. Pour the glasses. If you picked up the bottle, you got to pour it, mate. So it's from Belarus as well, isn't it? It's not actually Russian. No, it's not Belarus. It's Berlot from yeah, yeah. It's Latvian one. Latvian. Oh, Latvian. Yeah. yeah. Oh, even know. better. So pour it out, mate. Ah, <laughs> uh, hold on. No, get my hand. Man says imported on it. 
This one? This so one, it looks like a uh, so Ukrainian really that one, one. Who's this one? Ukrainian. Oh, no, so it's the same, it's the same mm. vodka exactly, but this is an imported version, so... But it's exactly I the same. I need my eye glasses. <laughs> You're showing your age, mate, but I can't believe it. You picked up an open bottle of vodka and you didn't pour any. <laughs> what is wrong with you, Sorry mate? Sorry for that. I was too busy my with Levi. the discovery. Rodney. Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you. No worries. How many have you had? Chris, can I ask the uh, okay, uh, Thank you. I'm okay. I've got my vodka and coke. Ah. You're cheating. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm watering it down. How many guys watching us today? 45. 45 guys. Once again, we're celebrating the old New Year. The old New Year? Yeah. It's the old weird new to year. say the yeah. old New Year. So if you've just joined us, Andre explained to us what's going on here. So traditionally, uh, in Russia, um, the New Year was celebrated according to the Julian calendar. And today, according to the Julian calendar, is the 31st of December. They're not aligned. So years ago, we're talking a couple of hundred years ago, New Year would have been today. Uh, as things progressed, things evolved. Today, they celebrate it just like the rest of the world, on the 31st of December, according to the Gregorian calendar. However, guys like us use this as an excuse for another party. We're celebrating the new year, and now we're celebrating the old new year. So I want to raise my glasses, my gla let's raise our glasses. What am I going to have with it? I don't know, the herring, you know, herring and vodka, guys. We've made little herring sandwiches here which are typical. And like I said before, a shot of vodka followed by this herring is like an orgasm for the soul. So here's to uh, soul orgasms and good new year. And cheers guys, thanks for being here with me. Thanks for the, the, the company, this, this moment, and here's to you guys. Thank you for being inviting. Mmm. 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 So good. Love it. Absolutely. Okay, so the next question is, um, Chris seems to be enjoying the Latvian potatoes. Does he find them much different from other countries? They're pretty much exactly the same as the UK. They taste the same. Um, they're obviously exactly how I like them, so the crispy and outside, soft in the middle. <coughs> but yeah, the potatoes are pretty much potatoes, aren't they? It, well, it all depends how you prepare them, that's all. So it's yeah. how you make them, right? It's how you make them, yeah. So yeah, when Chris said, he said, I'm going to struggle with your food, I said, well, what do you eat? He says, oh, I don't mind potatoes. I said, how about roast? Because I knew roast potatoes. But when he said I like crispy roast, I take my cooking seriously. When I make a roast dinner, you know, the full on roast beef, Yorkshire puddings, you know, uh, roast potatoes or whatnot. Uh, the potatoes for me are the, like the most important part. So I knew exactly what he was on about and marks out of 10. How did we score? Oh, I'm a harsh marker, but I would say definitely eight. I'll take an eight all day long. No, no, no. no. I'll take an eight all day long. Next question. I've noticed that in many countries to enter a museum, there are two uh, entry fees, one for locals and the uh, one for tourists. Does Latvia have the same? No, no, no. No, no. no Latvia has evolved. I mean, I remember once upon a time, I would travel in the region and it wasn't just museums. They had different prices for hotels. They had different prices in restaurants. If you walk into a restaurant in English, they'd hand you one menu. <laughs> and then, for instance, a Bulgarian would get a completely different menu, same items, half the price so you'd learn quickly how to greet people in bulgarian and you'd say you'd walk in and, say, and suddenly they say oh zdrave. you sit down where they bring you the bulgarian menu it's all pictures anyway so you're fine with that but yeah uh, that seems to be less and less now because um prices have just gone up everywhere for everybody you know the narrow the gap now cheap places are just really really hard to find now in, um sorry in britain museums are free 
I think on a, all of them, every day, or just on a Monday? No, pretty much all of them. Mm. Mm. So, uh, natural not history like museum, my dumb to self. Natural, no, not, not like no, those not private like, entities. That's not really a museum. But that's like the like Victorian like Albert in London, they're all free. Yeah. Yeah. You don't pay anything anymore. Anyway. But I think even in Latvia, like if you go on a Monday, there are days when it's free, isn't it? There are certain days, at times of year when it's free. I'm not there sure. are some days uh, in a month uh, when the museums are free for uh, for, for, for children. Mm. Oh, okay, just for children. But yeah, um, yeah, that that disparity between locals and foreigners that's disappearing more and more. But unfortunately, so for instance, if the locals used to pay this and the foreigners would pay this. Uh, no, now no, what's no, happened, no, everybody's no, paying no, this. No. <laughs> so yeah. Do you think that's the same in the outskirts? Or just, yeah, just it's just the same everywhere. I remember going to hotels in in Bulgaria, for instance, I'd go on a road trip across Bulgaria, try, you know, driving across. And um, literally the prices, the official prices were Bulgarians 20 euros a night, <laughs> foreigners 40 euros a night on the wall yeah. it wasn't it wasn't hidden it was no. just like if you're a Bulgarian you pay this no. much if you're a foreigner you pay this much they do that in Disneyland in Florida <laughs> <laughs> I don't get regarding the children so uh, the age under 14 it costs I don't know two years if you are over 14 you need to pay like for, for, for a zoo the full price, okay, but uh, children, when they are 14, they don't earn money. They yeah, just so need to pay more. I don't know why so. That's true, actually. Why is that? <laughs> you, you, you're probably responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Any good brands of winter coat? Uh, what do, what do you wear in minus conditions? Just don't wear one at a time. Well, you could probably just walk around in the shirt. Like, it, saves you, it saves you, you so around. much money by not wearing a coat. <laughs> you have Uniqlo in Britain. Yeah, oh, Uniqlo. I'll tell you what, Uniqlo. I was Uniqlo. Just say. Uh, I tried this year. I tried the um, the down one it in Germany. The down one. I bought the one. I came. Yeah, here. I had yeah, the same yeah, one. Yeah. Guys, he's absolutely right, and I was I was about to say it. Uniqlo for about 150, 200 euros, you get a down coat, even less that weighs nothing. It's mm -hmm. light as a feather. You don't even know you're wearing it. Um, and what I like, it has no brains, Q branch like uh, Haley Hansen. Yeah, H it's H nice. Letters, yeah, it's nice and one. different. Yeah, yeah. They have nice T-shirts. Everything they have is really nice. You do realize I buy you, everything there. Even underwear. I buy everything there. Yeah. Um, Uniqlo, I, I couldn't agree more. Last year I bought a um, winter coat, which is um, down. It weighs nothing. You put it on, but it's warm. It will keep you warm. It'll and when you're traveling, you can squeeze it right, in the size done. of an apple. That's true. Yeah. And it fits every backpack. So yeah, Uniqlo, they've got an online shop. I actually ordered mine online. They sent it to me to Latvia. I tried it on in Brussels. I just didn't have enough room for the luggage. So I said, you know what? I'll try it on in Brussels and then order it online. I, I knew what I was ordering. But if you look at the Uniqlo um, down jackets, they got several colors and they are absolutely amazing. What do you use? Yeah, here in Latvia, yeah, I, bought, I, I bought recently, I bought the uh, Comar, an Italian winter jacket. And it works? Yeah, it works. You know, as long as you close your jacket, wear a scarf, it's okay. It exactly. doesn't matter which brand, actually. Well, yeah, but the, the, the winters are hot. Yeah, the winter, here. yeah. You know, we have minus 27 the other day. Minus 27. I mean, do you guys realize that your freezer at home is probably yeah. about minus 15? I mean, yeah. if you stood outside for five minutes yeah. and didn't move, you would solidify just like a bit of roast beef in your freezer. <laughs> and that's how cold and it is. And when you open uh, the weather up, 
it's it's written like it's minus 15 for instance outside and feels like real minus feel, 27 yeah. exactly real the feel. real feel yeah. is just crazy so yeah. the beach today because the wind was blowing um, yeah that was no joke then actually chris today sent me a picture he he said you know what? i'll go to the beaches the riga beaches he went to yurmala he sent me a picture said the whitest beaches I've ever seen and you know he's been to Mexico and to the west coast of Florida where the stand is just so wet but didn't you see the whitest they beaches? They were definitely the whitest beaches. Just like snow down there. Well, also I've seen another thing I've never seen on a beach. A guy skiing on the beach. <laughs> no way. You saw a guy skiing, skiing yeah, 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 on yeah, the maybe beach? To, maybe tomorrow. Oh, you got to feel yeah. Yeah. You must have. quite should. enough snow. Yeah. Never yeah. seen that before. Are you like, going skiing tomorrow do? on the beach? Uh, I, I was yesterday skiing. Yes, but not on the beach. <laughs> in, in, in a park in Riga with my son. Really? Yeah. 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 Imagine cross country or what? Cross country. Yeah, fastest way to get around. Yeah, yeah. Do you like to go tomorrow? Fuck no. It was like uh, the rank of uh, the equipment is four and a half, I four and a half euros. Ski. Listen, I've, I've said this it's before. It's quite easy. It's easy for normal people. I'm not normal. I've got feet like Charlie Chaplin. My feet are naturally like this. For me to stand like this is yeah, agonizing. This is, it's painful. This is the way to change the pattern of your movement. Right. So let's try. So I, although I'm a traveler, uh, yeah, I've never been skiing. You don't ever. trust me. After the forest, no, after you don't the forest trust me. I just yeah, have an yeah. issue with it. It's, like, <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. And then I find myself in a place where I can't get out of it. Uh, okay, okay. Next question. Uh, please, can you name uh, some of your favorite bars in Riga? Mm. Absolutely. So, some of my favorite bars in Riga. I think we'll all be agree. If if you're if you're coming here on holiday, you've just landed, you don't know what to do. Head to the Rock Cafe. It's a landmark in Riga. Everybody knows it. It's a really good bar. It's got different <coughs> themes. You've got a club upstairs. You've got the main bar. You've got karaoke downstairs. There's loads of different things. And it's reasonably busy. Even in January, it's been. It's probably been the busiest place in Riga. Yeah, it's probably the most famous place during the week in Riga and it's a safe bet doesn't matter if it's a monday night or a wednesday night any time of year it's a safe bet as for me um i like to so so the the partying scene in riga is very divided so you've got the latvian parties and you've got the russian parties and i like to do a bit of both because i like all of them so um, there's a place called Sapni Un Cocktail, which means dreams and cocktails. And this is a typical Latvian place where you've got two floors. The top floor is more of a relaxed lounge. You can sit down. You know, the sofas are really comfortable. There's a DJ playing certain music, more retro. And then downstairs, You've got a massive bar as well. You've got places where you can sit and the music is more contemporary, more modern and everything else. Um, failing that, I'll usually start there, which is your typical Latvian place. And from there, I'll move my ass to a typical Russian place called Friends, which is the equivalent just now you're in a Russian crowd. You're playing and you're Russian singing music. Russian karaoke. You're singing Russian karaoke. Which is very karaoke, impressive. Which, which I did impressive. the day before, the, the night before last. I was with Chris in both. I took Chris to both. We went to Sapni and Cocktelli. We got fed up with there because it was dead January. Then we went across the street to a place called Speakeasy, which is supposed to be a Russian karaoke. We were the only two in there. there. Yeah. But it was, a, it was an amazing place. Yeah, it was interesting. But it, you know, January, first week of January, everybody's <laughs> broke, everybody spent their money. <laughs> From there, we went to uh, another place, a bar, which was on a, uh, upstairs. Upstairs, not by Spyro's. I can't remember the name of the place, but it was really cool. We had a couple of cocktails there. And, and you from mean the, the hotel? The no, first no, one? No? No, after the that, Skyline? we went to Friends. Yeah, yeah. Skyline, Sky, yeah. Sky, the Sky Bar we went to. And then after that, we went to the Friends place, which is a Russian karaoke during the week and on the weekends it's a russian nightclub with karaoke room and everything really fun but so, also quite sketchy did you think so <laughs> how's that if i was in there without you 
I probably would have been a little bit more worried than I was. <laughs> Good thing you came. If I'd have wandered in on my own, which I did try to do on the first night I was here, look, that's funny because open. you've said that and he said that as well. So uh, I must. It's got a sketchy vibe. I must vibe. give off this this comfort vibe. Like, well, you speak I'm Russian, so obviously it gives us that comfort. Good. If yeah. I was in there with a non-Russian speaker, because it is super Russian. Yeah. I, I would say probably eighty percent of the karaoke songs are all in Russian. Absolutely. Um, it was a great place, don't get me wrong, a good vibe, lots of nice people in there, but just... But if you were there alone, you'd be a feeling... It like had that. a Russian Mafia vibe all over it, 100%. 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> mafia here. No, we don't know anything about that. No, no, of course not. <laughs> but as a tourist, obviously he was coming yeah. for the first time, um, if I didn't meet you before I came, so obviously I sent you a message saying I'm coming, do you want to meet up? The first two days I was obviously on my own, as I would be if I'd have gone to any new town, and I would 100% have only met you stayed in the centre. I'd just oh, been at Old Town every night. I know what I'm getting. I've Obviously, I just wander around. I go to different bars. You're right. Rock Cafe is probably the best one I've, yeah. ones I've found. So I was trying to just do one drink in each bar so I could try every bar possible. Yeah. Um, that, that one that does the cherry liqueur, cherry uh, yeah. brandy. Yeah, that's yeah, a no beautiful vision, yeah. bar. Yeah, no vision, you yeah. only sell one drink. Yeah, yeah and that's the, a drink I'm not the, keen the on. Junk, the Drunk Cherry, it's a Ukrainian theme bar. You are. Mm. The, basically, I've, I drank in their bar in Moldova, in Krakow. I was going to say they have one in Krakow. They have one everywhere. And it's just really, really unusual. It's a bar that sells one drink, nothing else. You can't order a whiskey, you can't order a gin, you can't order a sandwich. Oh, you're making them on basket. All you can order is this one drink. It's a great. You do get a choice of sizes. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, the only <laughs> choice you have is how big do you yeah. want it? Like big but, or really big. But tell about the drink. So, the drink itself is basically cherry flavored vodka, um, which I'm not a fan of. Honestly speaking, I don't like flavored drinks. Like I'll never drink I'm lemon saying, vodka. Yeah. If I'm drinking vodka, I'm drinking Beriozvaya Russia. That's it. Uh, it's the best vodka there is, it goes well. But as a con, I mean, I'll always take subscribers there because it's a good, it's it, it's interesting, it's nice. Um, I think if you're here, you have to go, you're not a ladies' drink. It's a yeah, it's yeah. ladies' yeah. drink. It's a ladies' like drink. It's a sweet yeah. vodka. Um, you know, yeah, there are fellows that sit there and drink it, but it's more of a ladies' it's drink. A, it's a very date bar, you see a lot of dates in there, so mm -hmm. like couples. Obviously, I'm assuming the dates might not be. Well, no, friends, it starts off as young girls by themselves, and then guys come in and they become couples. Now you're you telling me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cherry vodka, but uh, cherry flavored vodka. It's more like cherry liquor. Huh? Yeah, look here, we are. I would say that's why yeah. I, I described it as a look here. When I was yeah. telling my but friends. the base is, is, is vodka, basically. Well, obviously, the thing with Riga is that's where, especially tourists will think that that's where mm. to go. Well, obviously, where you took me, them bars are much nicer, They're a bit more expensive. Yeah. But definitely, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have come this way. Definitely not. I wouldn't. No, it's, not it's probably the... it's only a fifteen minute walk from where I am, and, and their old town's probably ten minute walk from where I am. But they're in opposite directions. Yeah. And I would have thought there's probably nothing up here, so I wouldn't have tried it. Maybe I'd have walked it during the day for something to do. But I wouldn't You've have been, been there with me, haven't you? Where? To the, to the Sapnion Cocktail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. It was in the summer. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a, yeah it's, a, it's a nice place. It's, it's a nice place. Nice I definitely need to come back in the summer. 100%. And it's you know, if you live here, like, like I live, like I almost don't go to the old town. Yeah. I never go to old town actually. Yeah, sometimes now and then. With so you are the local one already. Yeah, he's already. Yeah, local. <laughs> like yeah, when the Christmas market is there, then I go yeah, there. But yeah, not yeah, like yeah. Uh, no. But the old town's cheaper for a night out than here. Yeah, but yeah, could be, could be, yeah, probably. But one strange thing I did notice in Old Town is during the day you meet a lot of Brits, Americans, English speaking people, but on a night it's very rare well, you meet them. I don't know where they go. What I don't like in Old Town is like you see tourists and they don't respect the street, they, they throw stuff. I hate that. We yeah. were talking about this last night, weren't we? The, the guy who was urinating against the. Yeah, the there's, a, there's a very famous story here in Latvia where unfortunately a British guy. Um, partying at night. I think he was Dutch, wasn't he? he wasn't no, he was not Dutch. He was British. We're trying to keep our reputation intact. 
Um, had an urge to urinate. Now, right at the beginning of the Old Town, there's a very, very important monument called the Freedom Monument. It means the world to the local people. It was built by the by by the locals, funded by the locals, mm -hmm. which is a very unusual thing. Usually, monuments are funded by the government, you know, taxpayers, whatever. But this was actually constructed by locals donating their money, and. This guy um, and it wasn't destroyed during it, the which, Soviet yeah, times, which, which yeah. is a miracle because that place where it stands, you would you could easily imagine an oh, oversized yeah. Lenin standing there. Yeah, but it survived the Soviet Union. Uh, Lenin was a couple of blocks away next to the Radisson Hotel, yeah, the tall yeah. Radisson, just Which outside. Which one of the 28 Radisson? Yeah, the, yeah. the <laughs> tall one, yeah, yeah. The, the one where the Russian club was. That's a lovely bar, um, the Sky Bar and the Radisson. Ah, it's really yeah. nice, yeah. And so, um, this guy's obviously partying, needing to urinate, um, walks up to the uh, monument and takes a piss. To be honest, there's a lot of trees around there. It's in a park. You yeah, could easily just urinate on a tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. As far as I know, it was like a challenge for British tourists ah. to pee on, on the monument. Was it? Yeah, oh, yeah, right. yeah. It was many times. So like, anyway, like he, this yeah, guy yeah. got nicked. He got arrested. Yeah. And back in those days, the corner house, the, the corner house, um, yeah. which is known as the KGB, KGB house, office, yeah. was still operational, I think. And... From what I know, I might be wrong, but from what I've read is that they detained him in this KGB uh, prison cell. Now, I've sat there by myself. I arranged with them. I made a video about this where I visited the KGB museum here in Riga and they left me to it. I just emptied the museum and had it all to myself. And I tell you, sitting in one of those cells is just when you know that you can just open the door and leave is tormenting enough and this guy was detained there so um yeah that was it yes so don't be on the monument is our advice yeah because if you come to riga do whatever you want you have a lot of freedoms just respect the monument rightfully so so and it's called the freedom monument so let's drink to, to latvia's freedom Definitely. A country that has experienced very little freedom over the years. So here's to Latvia and to its ongoing freedom. Oh, I'm going for the herring. Nothing beats the herring. Again. <laughs> the eighth time in a row. Mm. Mm. The combination with the olives is really good. Good, yeah. yeah. And getting back to the topic, mm, the bars. Mm. I like two more beers. Mm. They have really good moonshines, beers, of course, kitchen and uh, Belgian beer cafe. Mm. That's true. There's they a place called amazing two kitchen. more beers. Yeah. They've now expanded. There used to be a place called Rockabilly that now belongs to two more beers right in the square. But um, a great variety Is that the of beers. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've tried to go there a few times, but it closes quite early, or it does in January. Mm. Yeah. Uh, live music, good vibe, um, and great, great snacks. If you go there, order the the garlic bread. Basically, it's this kind of bread, toasted up, fried up with garlic, with a dip. It's amazing. That's a good place to have it. it. There's another great. place called Allah. Um, Allah, the old one. Allah is a. It basically means cave. Now, ALA is pretty much an institution here in Riga. Um, they've been around since 2000, let's see, the new location is 2013, but before that they were where Shot Cafe is in it. From the very big beginning of, oh, yeah, 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 ex yeah. Exactly, yeah. and this yeah. is a phenomenal place. If you go, go on a Wednesday, because they have the Latvian folk dancing there, and you can dance with all the Latvian girls, their local <laughs> dancing, it's really great. I'm actually scheduled to make a video about that very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. But their, their cuisine is uh, typical Latvian. You'll have a fantastic night. It's underground. It's a unique setting. The actual building dates back from the 17th century, I believe, the, the actual cave or the, the cellar that they're in. 
and uh, very unique place. So I'll be making a video there very soon. Stay tuned. But um, Ala is definitely, if you come to Riga, head to Ala, you won't regret it. Have you been uh, in Riga to a medieval restaurant, Rosenga? So is I'm I'm not sure what it's called. I've been to a medieval restaurant quite next to the Rathaus. It's in the, the old town. Right? Yeah, in the old, yeah, in the old town where you go. Yeah. There's like yeah. two rooms. There's one on the right yeah. on the street, and then there's yeah. the one that goes yeah, down yeah. the stairs. Uh, I'm not sure if it's that one. I can't remember the name. Rosenga. Yeah, yeah. really good. One. Really yeah. good. Uh, but uh, but uh, if you compare it to all the Hans in, uh, in Tallinn, you know, the all the Hans in Tallinn? No, go on, tell me about Western. it. So, I prefer all the Hans in Why? Tallinn. What's better about it? So, uh, the food? they have better food. Yeah, okay, they had it before five years or more. Yeah, be well, okay, be before still. the COVID, I don't know what uh, what's going on now. And so, the... the um, all the Hans is more authentic mm -hmm. they don't have any artificial life so you, you, you still yeah. feel like yeah, it's, yeah. you're going back in the yeah. day yeah definitely going to try that as i said i had a big plan to travel all of the baltics um this year's just been crazy you know 2023 put out 120 pieces of content which is pretty much unbelievable that's with the fact that in the summer i had an accident smashed my head on the pavement my whole summer plans went to shit with driving my Lada all across Eastern Europe. And then the end of the year, same thing. But, um, you know, I'll be planning trips to Tallinn and Lithuania very shortly and uh, sharing it with you guys. So I'm looking forward to it. When are you going to go to Lithuania? You want to come with me? Done deal. <laughs> so, Vodking and I are going to Lithuania. You want to come? Kaliningrad? Kaliningrad, yeah, Kaliningrad as well. We, yeah, we need visas to go there. Yeah, yeah, but now you can do the e visa. No, four day uh, yeah. e visa, yeah. Can you read it? Do they allow? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The e visa, uh, e visa, four days, you get your visa and really? you can go to Kaliningrad. It, 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 it was before the COVID, the e visa. No, they started no, again no, in July. Yeah. Really? They started again in July. So when are you going to Lithuania? Are you coming? Well, one of my friends asked me about going to Lithuania soon. Bring your mate. Kali and then Kaliningrad is very fun. How about we all meet in Lithuania and have <laughs> a... <clears throat> let's celebrate New Year in Lithuania in February. And we'll just make our own New Year. Exactly. Yeah. We'll be yeah. celebrating. It's obviously a vodka. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let me know when you go. I might, I might get him to come over because he's been on local. Absolutely. And I'd love to do Kaliningrad as well. That would be great. But yeah, obviously we'll have to sort these out in advance. Yeah, Kaliningrad was fantastic. <laughs> Kaliningrad, yes, this is fun. I, I, I was there in 1998, and since that time it, it, it changed yeah, a lot. Yeah, but some things yes. never change. You yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. The, the pictures coming out of Kaliningrad every five hours yeah. is just amazing. So, you know, we just. Uh, I was there with my colleague, yeah, and he went to buy socks in a shop. In Kaliningrad. And, yeah, in Kaliningrad. So, uh, it was right after the huge economy crisis wow. what was in 1998 yeah 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 it's, it was right after he went to the shop and this sales lady told me are you crazy go across the street and you find the similar socks <laughs> 10 times cheaper <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to that. And so everything, so they have uh, like 70% of amber, of all the world oh. amber is in, yeah. in, in, in Kalimbra. And everything that can be called amber, they call amber. Even a Every, rock. And what cannot be called amber, anyway, they, they call, call it, it amber. amber. Like, it's uh, a very dark amber. Wor it's, it's wor wor worship gold. factory, wor wor worship, they call it amber. So, um, the mineral water, amber, the hotel was uh, amber, oh. um, and the only exception, we were, we were drinking with the local guys, um, they were working for the local newspaper called New Wheels. New this Wheels? Is, yes, daily newspaper, New Wheels, it, the, 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 craziest, the craziest name. How do you say that in Russian? 
Новые колеса. Новые колеса. Yes, it was crazy. And uh, that was the time when in Russia uh, was um, uh, so the, the, it, it came illegal to drink vodka uh, on the street. Mm -hmm. All right. But we we came with this journalist from Kaliningrad, New Kolosa, uh, Nove Kolosa. Uh, we went to the uh, to small shop, and there were herrings in a plastic can oh, like wow. this. The and we, we have the same. We have the same. Yes, but the only difference was that there was a, a tiny fork uh, stretched uh, by uh, plastic foil to this um, inside, inside, yeah, 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 ready to, to eat, yeah, ready to eat, ready yes, to eat. ready to snack vodka. <laughs> Were the girls amber as well? No, <laughs> <laughs> it was like American porn star. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was in Gdansk. Bef obviously before yeah. the war and everything, you could actually get a boat across to Kaliningrad and you didn't need a visa. It was like a one day trip. Oh but really? You, 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 really you didn't need a visa for the one day, as long as you came back but you didn't do it. No, unfortunately we didn't have time, we were only there a few days. Are you sure? Well, it yeah, was, was for that? locals, no? Or for everyone? I think it was for everyone, I don't know. I, I didn't really look into it that much, but I just seen that okay. there was a, yeah. a, a day trip to um, Kaliningrad. Yeah. I'm a little bit disappointed Maybe I didn't there do was it, an exception for, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Mm. So how many are we at now? 38. 38 to you guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Happy New Year. We're celebrating the old New Year here with my friend Rodney, my friend Andre and my friend Chris. Um, all subscribers and colleague here also has a YouTube channel. Check him out, The Vod King. He's going to be putting out at least 20 videos in the next year. <laughs> so I'm committing him right now. Yeah. Um, 40. Aim high. Aim high. 40. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, any other questions? Mm -hmm. So, somebody said in New Year you need to run with bare feet around the house. Is that oh, true? Well, this it's, it's is the first tough. time when I hear it. I have yeah. human feet, but we can find some bare feet. No, bare. Like yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd do it around the block. <laughs> yeah, this guy <laughs> runs barefoot yeah. everywhere. He's like. Wim Hof, he's running around. <laughs> the yeah, Wim Hof, he's Wim crazy. Hof in his yeah. T-shirt, the Iceman. <laughs> so somebody's asking, Justin, are you a spy? Am I? Yes, a spy? he is. I'm going to tell you now. He's going to deny it, but he is. You think <laughs> I am? Yeah. I know a lot of people think that I am. That's a weird question. Even me. If I was a spy, what would you be spying on? <laughs> no, but the thing is, people ask me that a lot. And I'm thinking, tonight, how do we even answer that? If I was a spy, I'd never admit it. If I wasn't a spy, I would deny it. So ah, but would it's, you just just, it's just you got to make your own mind up because, you know, as much as I can say, no, I'm not, people always say to me, I'm lying. So, yes, I speak many, many languages. I go into different territories and infiltrate, you know, local people and everything else. Uh, yeah, I'm spying for myself, maybe. <laughs> I'm just trying to see how things you know, are in different places. People will think what they like. Um, there was many times when Jewish people asked me, are you the one for... Uh, are you one of us? us? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you one of the family? Yeah, yeah. and and I uh, invented the, the formula of the right answer to these questions. And what do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> so, whoever, okay, whoever asked me if I'm a spy, what do you think? Do you think I'm a spy? I think if you're a spy, you're not going to have a YouTube channel, are you? Sure, where you go. <laughs> However, it would be a good cover. It would be a good cover, no? People say, yeah, but YouTube channels are great cover. See, that's not what yeah. say. So, yeah, but I'm a YouTuber. So, yeah, that's yeah. a perfect cover exactly. for you so for a spy. No, you can't get out of it, can you? And you, you drink know. a lot of vodka a lot. And you're not getting drunk, that's why you are a spy. Yeah, that, that's one of the things they teach you, especially you when in yeah. Eastern Europe. They teach you how to drink a lot of vodka and still not talk right. bullshit. You are not yeah. spy. You've got to think to yourself, yeah. what would you be spying on? Pubs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but the person who asked me if I'm a spy, what's the name? Uh, Dan Ute, what do you think? Am I a spy? <laughs> I think it would, be, it would be cool if you were. My name's Bond, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> All the Scottish people now are just wounded by that accent impression. <laughs> Vodka Martini. <laughs> Shaker not stirred. Yeah. <laughs> so, somebody's asking, 
So I uh, hope you have the vodka in the freezer first before you drink it. We did. It. Please tell me the name of it, uh, of the vodka again. So this vodka is called Beriozovaya Rosha. Uh, it's my favorite vodka. It was in the freezer way before. We've already done. It's been out a long time now. Yeah. Two. We've already finished two bottles. We've got two more. We, when it's good vodka, you don't need to put it in the freezer, actually. But it's still better. Nevertheless, it's, it, it, I like yeah. it when it's oily, yeah. French, but not freezer. It's no, I like it when it's got that oily yeah. kind of like it's like oil. You know, that's the that's the best way to drink vodka. But yes, it was it was chilled. I've got a cold room in the apartment here where. We just put our stuff. Yeah. It's so cold in there because it's it's from outside. Cold. It's colder than the freezer. Exactly. After so the freezer, all the vodka are the same. Yes, but how do you? People always say, "What's a good vodka?" I'll tell you what's a good vodka. You can't tell a vodka by the way it tastes. The way you judge a good, a good vodka is how you feel the next morning. And I'm telling you, this vodka, this vodka. Tomorrow morning, you wake up earlier than your girlfriend, you're making her a cup of coffee, bringing her breakfast in bed because she supported you as being There's a, a promise for you tomorrow, before. that's what you're getting. <laughs> um, but you have no hangover, so. Spell it for me. So we can show the home. B, it's B E R E O E Z. B E R E Z B E R E Z O V A Y A Beryozavaya and then Rosha, which is R O S H A. Um, absolutely, come to Riga, give me a call, and we'll have some uh, Beryozavaya Rosha together. Where are you from? Yeah, who's asking actually? Where are they from? So when they respond, let us know. <laughs> I'm, 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 this is my call. I bought for you. Vodka, Which and vodka? I forget about it. I, I bought vodka evening Voronezh. So Voronezh? You, yeah, you need to invite me once again at least. No problem, my friend. Yeah. So obviously that spelling might be for people who aren't English. So for English people, it's a weird B, E, P, E, 3, <laughs> 0, B, A, a backwards R, P, O, a W with a little tick on it and an A. Power. Yeah, it says power. Yeah. <laughs> Get that in Amazon, I'm sure they all show up. Okay, next one for Chris. Are you going to try this chicken? It's getting cold. Sorry. It's already cold, so I'm trying it any time, it's fine. <laughs> so the reason I'm not trying the chicken is I don't want to make a mess of it when I'm on camera. So once we finish I'll eat it then. Do you like the uh, Polish Bison Krasnodka? Oh, I do. I buy that at home. Yeah, what, what, what the, Polish? The, the Polish Zubrovka, Zubrovka. The, bison, Zubrovka. The, bison, the Bison Vodka. That is really good. I mean, in Poland they drink it with apple juice. That's my first choice at home when I, I do Asda orders, and that's always the first one I choose. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm a fan as well. I mean, po the Poles know about their vodkas as well. There's debates where it originated from. Some people say Poland, the, some people say Russia. There is a small Russia. city next uh, s s small town next to warsaw when uh, the name vodka first time appeared oh really so, yeah so you believe it's polish the origination yeah, yeah. of vodka yeah so, so if polish, a russian polish has now said that yeah. polish vodka is uh, the vodka originates from poland there's no more dispute there's no more argument here so that's it's Poland getting invaded now, isn't it? You just caused that. <laughs> yeah. And e even uh, uh, Peter the Great, you know, the, the, the Tsar of Russia. Yeah, yeah, I know who Peter yeah, the Great yeah, was. Yeah. He preferred vodka from Gdansk. His then, favorite vodka was uh, from Gdansk. However, Gdansk. however, the refinement of vodka. So the, the creation of vodka as a spirit was very much Polish, I guess, I'm not going to argue, I don't know, but the refinement of it was actually done by Mendeleev. No, no. Okay, now no, we're Not refinement, but he, he made calculations uh, for the tax authorities. Uh, not just the tax yeah. authorities, but also what is considered a vodka. <gasps> actually, in, in February, this is the reason to meet next time in February, is uh, the the birthday of vodka? Is it? Yeah. Party! Happy birthday! To 
<laughs> and we're gonna celebrate both. Let me check. Ah, uh, so I switched all the, the the mobile internet. So yeah. But that so let's celebrate vodka's birthday. But February, you got it. It's hit and miss with me because I have a lot of traveling, so we need to coordinate this. It's not February. It's thirty first of January. January. Eighteen sixty five. In two weeks. I'm Same place. I, I or, am, or, or, or come to my place. I am. <laughs> unfortunately, I will be in Sofia at the time. But next year we'll celebrate <laughs> vodka birthday on the thirty okay. first of January. So meanwhile, um, how many people in the room? Thirty four. Thirty four. To all you guys, wishing you a happy old new year. We're celebrating here with Chris, Andre, and Rodney, and. Uh, На здоровье. На здоровье. Товарищ. Go on. So, how is Justin doing with learning Latvian? Is uh, if he uh, cracked it, let me know the trick. Mm. How's my Latvian? I'm going to be surprising you very soon. Uh, did, did they want to know the trick on how to learn Latvian? Mm -hmm. mm. So. Regardless of whether you want to learn Latvian, Russian, Spanish, French, Swahili, doesn't really matter. Um, learning languages for me is something that I've taken very seriously all my life. It's my passion. I'm always doing it. Um, I always say when you're learning a language, you need two things first. You need either the love for the language or the leverage, the reason to learn the language. So you might love a language. You might love the idea of being able to listen to a Italian opera without having to read, you know, the 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 the, the translation and be able to listen to the opera and understand it and immerse yourself fully. Or you might find yourself in a situation where you have no choice. I was telling Chris yesterday. Once I flew back from um, from Miami to London, and next to me was sat was. Uh, you know, an English guy that spoke perfect Spanish. I mean, this was South American Spanish without any accent, knew all the slang. And as we spoke, turns out the guy had just been released from a 15 year prison sentence in Colombia <laughs> and he was on his way home. So he spent 15 years in a Colombian prison and learned to speak Spanish perfectly. So that's not obviously because he always dreamt about sitting in prison with a bunch of Colombians. It was because he had to learn the language. So you need two, one of two things, either the, the love for a language or the need for a language. And once you can identify these, and I think that's the problem that I had with Latvia, is that um, when moving here, it's very easy to get by with English or Russian, even though Latvian is the national language. Um, it's easy to get very lazy and everything else, but I've made it a point to learn um, Latvian now, so I'm currently learning it. And uh, if you want to know how, um, check out one of my videos that I made recently about um, AI and killing my future, basically. And you'll get a whole background on me and hmm? I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know you can drop me an email and I'll send you a link and we can have a consultation because I'm just now starting a whole language program not necessarily on a specific language but my method for learning languages so um, check out that video um, you'll see how it is that I learn languages but also if you're serious about learning Latvian French Swahili uh, Arabic Russian, whatever it is, doesn't matter. They're all the same. Um, how do you say sleep? Spot. There you go. I taught him one Russian word yesterday. And I, I spit if you're sleeping. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I taught him one Russian word. I just wanted to test him. I said, listen, let me show you my method. I'm going to give you one Russian word and I promise you, you won't forget it. And I used my method and this is now a day later and he remembered. I did the same thing with him. <laughs> Um, it's a method that's worked for me. It's very primitive. I'm not a linguist. I don't teach languages as to 
I'm going to teach you, for instance, if you wanted to join my Russian course, I'm not going to teach you Russian. That's not my, if you want to learn Russian, go and find yourself the next Pushkin and he'll teach you Russian. I'll teach you how to speak Russian. That's all that's necessary. Just like a baby who grows from the ages of zero to six, they learn how to speak. After that, they confuse themselves with all the other bullshit. But if you want to communicate in any language, French, Spanish, English, Hebrew, Russian, uh, Arabic, German, Swahili, whatever it is, let me know and um, we'll have a consultation call. And uh, yeah, I can help you out big time. What do you think the easiest language you learned was? There's no such thing as an easy or difficult language. Oh, That's same. the whole point. Everybody says, oh, Arabic is difficult. Russian is difficult. French is difficult. English is easy. Spanish is easy. It's all bollocks. Mm. I can take a six month old baby from anywhere in the world, place him anywhere, place him in Holland. I mean, Dutch, Dutch. God for Dutch is a language. So you, I you think it really depends of your mother tongue. No, I don't if, think so. It if, depends if you're a Brit, so it's quite easy to learn German. Yeah. French. Uh, Dutch, yes. Yeah. No, 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 French, not that much, but yeah, yeah, maybe. I disagree. I think if you, if you are an academic and you believe in learning the way you were taught in school, then you're 100% right. If you believe that, fuck that, because I never graduated kindergarten, I've never been to a high school. Colleges, the minute I walk past the college, alarms set, set off, they don't let me in. Um, I learn languages as babies do. You take a baby, six months old, you take a baby from, from Russia and you put him in Timbuktu, you know what, he'll speak the local language, doesn't matter. So he doesn't wonder whether it's difficult or easy, whether he can do it or don't do it, he just does it. Um, so yeah, send me a message, I'll be more than happy to spend 30, 40 minutes with you talking to you about your language objectives and we can take it from there. What is the name of vodka town near Warsaw? What's the name of the town near Warsaw? With the vodka. Follow the vodka channel. I don't. <laughs> <do it>. I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Have you been uh, in Vienna uh, studio? In what? Vienna studio. Vienna Vienna studio. Yeah. Yes, of course I have. It's on. Um, uh, two or three blocks down. Yeah, literally two or three yeah. blocks from where we are right now. Uh, it's on Elisabetta and um, there's yeah, a couple of them actually. But it's on Elisabetta no. and Antonius, I think. Uh, there is another one uh, on Stabu and Terpatas. Yeah, true. What is it? Uh, it's basically a wine, wine, a wine uh. studio, but it's a cool place because they sell wines, but you can sit there and eat overpriced food <laughs> and buy bottles of wine and drink them. It's, but I, I like it. I think it's cool. <laughs> the first loyalty card I ever had was Vienna Studio. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a fan. I like Vienna Studio. It's, it's a nice place. Okay, so the last question, I guess. Uh, is Chris bringing a bottle of that vodka home? No. Why not? <laughs> That's great vodka in England. <laughs> I know, it'd be a bit of a shock, but um, I only have um, carry-on luggage, so it's too big to mm. carry. Ah. So, unfortunately, if I was, if I had main luggage, I'd probably stick a couple of bottles in, to be honest. Because mm. <coughs> it is, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's beautiful vodka. It Maybe is. you can find it in Eastern European supermarket. Probably, no, you probably won't can. Find this no, one. you won't find this one. So I, I never, ever, ever drink vodka straight, ever. I, I'm a big vodka drinker, I drink vodka a lot, it's my main drink. <clears throat> I will drink beer now and again, mainly during the day if I want to slow down a little bit. But vodka is my drink, but with coke every time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even nice. But you've had this one straight, and tell me if it's not the smoothest vodka oh, you've ever had. By far, compared to Smeroff. Smeroff, like, oh, uh, it rips your throat out compared to that. Yeah. <laughs> but this is another thing, I don't drink tequila, but when I was in Mexico, they have some beautiful tequilas, oh, yes. and some of them are pretty smooth. And everybody assumes you're supposed to shot tequila, but in Mexico you don't, you'd sip it. It's like whiskey yeah. to them. Mm. So if you get like a good tequila, they're not harsh. Like we get obviously in the UK, tequilas are horrible. I would never drink a tequila in the UK. It makes me feel sick the second <laughs> I do. Any other ones? No, that's it. 
maybe we will find another one on 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 text Online, free shop. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, text free shop. It just depends because I'm all about value. So obviously, I mean, this is great value here. Yeah. But in the UK, that might be thirty pound. Yeah. Like that. I remember when I can pay fifteen for a liter of bison vodka or yeah. other ones. So yeah, like like I was saying yesterday, if it's twice the price, is it twice as good? If I'm mixing it with coal, not necessarily. Like, what difference yeah. does it make if I'm mixing yeah. it with coal? Yeah. I would tell you that in this case, because it's half the price, it's ten times as good. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, if I was here, hundred percent, I'd get it. Yeah. But in the UK, the chance of you getting that is probably nil. Absolutely. But if you did get it, it would be so expensive that it would just be not worth getting. Mm. Well, guys, thank you very much for being with us tonight. I want to wish you once again a happy 2024. Um, it was an amazing evening spending time with my good friend Rodney, Andre and Chris. Thank you for being with us. And what do they have to remember? Let's see if any fuckers of you remember what I say at the end of my videos. What do I say at the end of my video? Enjoy your journey. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your journey guys. All the best. Done?